Hello everyone, this is Ken Quigley from Keystroke and today's deep dive webinar is going to be on the new Keystroke API or CAPI for short. Um, I just want to go through a few housekeeping items uh, just because we don't want to kind of let everyone relax and watch uh, the presentation without having to worry about writing anything down. So this event will be recorded um, and you can find that recording from our homepage, scroll down. And here's the upcoming events where you can find all future events, but here's the keystroke training videos. And you simply scroll down and click on, here's the, our Windows training videos and here's the keystroke product videos. And you'll find this down here um, probably by no later than tomorrow, okay? This webinar is expected to go about an hour. Um, we're going to do a fairly deep dive on the product, the integrations, and Awesome, the developer of the uh, Keystroke API, as well as uh, custom tables and many of our other products, is actually going to do a demonstration of the setup and configurations. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do is show you, if you go back to our homepage, go click blog, scroll down, you're going to see a blog that we wrote on it. And you can kind of review this after the fact, if you've missed any points or have any questions, like here's some technical points as to, you know, what's unique about the CAPI and don't want to have to feel that, you know, you've got to remember any of this. So this you can review here. Okay. And okay. So with that covered, let's get going. So what is the, the CAPI? Uh, Keystroke API, or CAPI for short, is a 64-bit REST API that works with all versions of ACT 19.2 and higher. And we had to do that because there were some feature choices we had to make that if we extended uh, support any further back, we would have to drop. But anyway, more importantly, um, CAPI extends API access to pro and off-plan premium users as well. That's really important because right now, uh, the ACT Web API only is uh, available to people that are current subscribers and, and no um, version of pro users have ever had access to the API. So CAPI was built for, um, for the express purpose of supporting add-ons with a faster, more stable web API solution while increasing um, the ACT integration support for web services like Joomla and WordPress. CAPI is easy to install and is also free to everyone. Let me repeat this free to everyone. There's no fee, there's no upgrade options, there's no premium tiers. This is all free all the time. It's not time bombed, it will be forever free. And I hope it will become evident as to why we're doing that uh, through this presentation. Anyway, depending on where it's being used, some additional environmental setup may be required like static IPs or DIN DNS and some port forwarding, but those are all things most ACCs or IT people are extremely familiar with. The important part is, CAPI comes with an easy to use installer that Austin's going to demonstrate that handles all the in internal configurations for you. And as I said, Austin, our CTO and developer of CAPI will demonstrate the setup of CAPI on one of our servers in a few minutes. Okay. Um, needless to say, if you're working with a participating hosting provider like Keystroke or RTG or Tech Commandos, they'll handle all the setup for you. Just like with, you know, if you're getting the ACT Web API, they will literally provide you the address. Okay, so let's actually see what that looks like. So here's a current list of all of the um, ACT Web APIs provided by us and RTG. And if you scroll down further, here's the current um, APIs for CAPI, okay, or the CAPI addresses. And as you can see, very simple, very short, and typically they'll have a forward slash CAPI extension. Okay, and this is uh, currently available in ours and um, RTG servers, and we're expecting, you know, I'll, I'll get into some of the other ones um, in a little bit. So what, that's CAPI, what, what isn't CAPI? So what CAPI isn't is a replacement for the ACT Web API. So let me just go up here. So here's our connections page. So ACT, um, the ACT Web API is an exclusive connector for things like AMA, Insights, Dynamic Dashboards, Outlook or Word integration, specifically the V22 and V23 Outlook and Word integrations, or the mobile app that shall not be named. Okay, CAPI is also not a replacement for ACT Connect Link, which is actually not really about the API, but more about um, you know providing kind of a tunneling service. Okay, and while CAPI can run alongside the ACT Web API on the same server, 
okay, because um, CAPI is a 64-bit API and currently there's only a 32-bit version of the ActWeb API. Uh, CAPI cannot work for SAS databases since SwiftPage is the only one um, that hosts uh, the APIs for SAS and they will never, I, I presume never will support the um, CAPI, okay? So let's go over to, okay, go back here, click on shop and scroll down to a selection of most of our API uh, products. Okay, so what is the objective of CAPI? The first objective is CAPI is, uh, for us is to build API support uh, for uh, our add-ons. And to that end, we have updated the following applications to support CAPI. So the first one is handheld contact API. So Vic will be doing a demonstration at the end of you know, the, the different setup processes for handheld contact API. Now remember, this will now be available to pro users and off-plan premium users in a way it was never previously available. So previously only classic handheld contact was a, a mobile option for the um, for pro and uh, off-plan premium customers. Well now once they set up uh, CAPI, the API solution can work for them as well. Um, the other product that uh, Austin retrofitted this week was Act for Mail. Okay, as well as all of the Linktivity products, specifically Link to Calendar, Link to Events, Link to Forms, and Link to List. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of a demonstration on you know the the slightly different setup uh, procedures for CAPI at the end of Austin's presentation. Okay, now one of the things that isn't really known around the community is was our very first CAPI deployment because it's it's. You know, one thing to say, you know, copy this, copy that, but what is it like, what is a real use case where we've deployed it internally for our own business purposes? And what that was, the very first iteration was the Keystroke Account Manager, okay? And the Keystroke Account Manager provided our customers direct access to their account and licensing information from the internet, okay? They logged in with their email, and they're getting some static here. Okay. They logged in with their, their email, their, um, their account number and their password, and they were able to get direct information on their account that was being read directly from our database. So let's just see a quick example of that. So here is the login. Now this is available in uh, our mobile apps as well for iOS and Android, but for uh, simple Windows users, you can go to uh, KAM for Keystroke Account Manager .kqc.ca. Here's our account, here's my email, here's my password, and I can click on go. Now what this is, is logging in, it's checking, um, checking against our database using CAPI. And now we can just click on here and it's gonna read all the subscription information licensing information that's in our ACT database, support contracts, and many other features, okay? Now we've built in some other functionality in this, but those um, first three are all reading directly from our database that we were able to, um, to connect using CAPI. So there's a real life um, example. So if you were thinking of building a membership tool where you kept all your members in the active database and you provided wanted to provide an internet front end for them to log in, uh, renew, because our customers can even renew their subscriptions or renew their, uh, their support contracts, all of those would be available as a um, CAPI connected service. Okay, so that's the use case. Now phase two, I've already discussed a little bit, um, and that is to make sure that CAPI is available to as many people as possible, um, and that's through the, the hosting providers, uh, like RTG, as I showed you, has already uh, deployed it for their V22 and V23 servers. Uh, Tech Commandos um, will be deploying it in the near future as well. They're committed to it, and I've already talked to uh, John Klubnik. He's excited about it. And the documentation for setting it up um, will be distributed to all of the ACCs next week. We've already written it up so that you guys will know how to deploy it on your own uh, customer servers. Um, and again, this is something that Austin is going to run through uh, a demo of. 
The third, the third objective is, is you know, the inevitable one, and that is to work with the development community. And in the coming weeks and months, we'll be hosting many training webinars for the ACT development community, distributing supporting documentation to them as well, so they can comfortably build solutions that they know that they can rely on. Solutions that, you know, have better filtering. And Austin's gonna explain some of this 64-bit API, so much better management, fewer uh, crashes based on the 32-bit architecture. So all of this, and obviously this is gonna support, um, you know, ACT in the fall when they come out with a 64-bit architecture because we're already there, okay? The fourth objective is to build a plugin for popular website content management systems like WordPress and Joomla. So people can really integrate easily the different data exchange functions um, into their website. We can, I, I showed you an example here, um, and then we can expand uh, to include things like e-commerce solutions, Shopify, Hickashop, WooCommerce. Like for instance, every single person that checks out um, a product on our website, automatically it's checked against our, our database. And if they're not there, they're added to our database. No data entry at all. And it's all done through a CAPI connection. Okay, and the last thing is, uh, before I hand it over to Austin, um, we're expecting some people to ask, so I just want to say that building a Zapier plugin uh, for CAPI is on the roadmap, um, but honestly, it's not a priority right now, because Zapier in integrations with ACT is really not strong enough for us to prioritize, um, and I'm not sure, honestly, with CAPI, we would be adding much to what we found is already a weak uh, offering. So it's on the roadmap, we're going to explore you know, you know, different ways of attacking it, but our current priority for May is to build things like plugins for people to easily integrate it with WordPress um, and Joomla and uh, some of the e-commerce solutions that I, uh, I mentioned. So with that uh, concludes my present portion of the presentation. So I'm going to make Austin the presenter. Are you ready, Austin? Hi, Sam. Okay. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. We can. Yep. Okay, so um, I just remoted into one of our hosting servers to kind of show you how to set up CAPI. Um, so the first step is to just download it. So it should be on our FTP, and that is if you go to actforwork.com, you'll see all of our products there. Um, you want to scroll down to the CAPI folder here and double click to download it. Um, should be pretty small download. Um, and setting it up is again pretty straightforward. You just run it, um, just hit run, and um, you will hit next and install. And that should do it on, if you're on um, actual web uh, server setting. But uh, it, I understand that some of you may not have that if you have um, uh, App Pro. Um, or if you're just running uh, Windows 10, you will need to install IIS. Um, so before you do any of this, you want to make sure um, IIS is installed. Uh, you will get an error message um, uh, if you tr attempt to install it with that um, not available. So um, I will show you both the server and the uh, Windows 10 um, environments, how to do that quickly. Um, so if you're on a Windows server like this, um, just open up your server manager from the um, start menu. Okay. And on the top, click Manage and Add Roles and Features. Okay, hit Next on the first page here. Um, you want to do role-based. Um, and also, there should be only one uh, server listed on this page. But if there's multiple, just select the one you're logged into right now. Um, hit Next. And just for clarity, Austin, this is for people that don't have IIS installed, right? Like, this is not... Yep something that would be required if it's already there. So it's not it's not part of the CAPI setup, more the environmental setup. Yep, yeah, so like I said, yeah, if you have actual web already installed on your server, it, it already installs IS and everything. So you, that, this part you don't need to worry about if you have, but if you have ACT Pro or if you're running Windows 10, then you, you will need to do this. Um, okay. So, and hit next. Um, so on the select server roles page, um, scroll down all the way. Um, you'll see IIS, web server. Um, so you just check that, hit add features, um, hit next. Um, and uh, you want to make sure that um, 
the ASP.NET 4.5 is checked right now because it comes installed with Windows, it's already checked, but for yours, it might not be checked by default, but uh, you wanna make sure you do that. Um, and hit next again. So this is just the web server role. So here you will need to uh, enable a couple of things. Um, you wanna scroll down. Uh, let me put the delay here on my side. Give me one moment. Do we have any questions at this time? No questions yet. So if you do have questions, please put them in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so you want to scroll down a bit here. And sorry, I'm getting a lot of, I don't know if it's my internet or but it's really delayed. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So. Um, you want to go over to the application development section. Um, you want to expand that, and you want to enable the ASP.NET um, related um, options here. So you want to select, let's say, 4.5, hit Add Features, and also the 3.5, and just the regular ASP. So you want to make sure that these three are checked. These are not checked by default, so um, this is important. Um, the rest, uh, I believe you can leave as is, or you can enable more options if you need, but this should be good as like a bare minimum setup. So hit next and just hit install and that will install IS for you. Just let that finish. Um, oh, and while that oh, is, sorry, go ahead. Awesome, one quick question. One question. Yep. So, so, a question. so Cappy will be for server environment only, correct? No, it's for desktop only, and that's what I was going to go into next is okay. while well, this is installing, is I'll show you it on, on my desktop if I minimize it. This is Windows 10, so it it does not have uh, IIS installed by default. So to do that, you open up your um, programs and features um, uh, section here in, uh, uh, in your control panel, um, and on the left-hand side, you'll see a turn Windows features on or off option, okay? So if you click that, um, there you will see Internet Information Services, which is IIS. So you want to do the same thing that we did with the server one, just expand it um, and make sure the um, uh, the application services is enabled. So here we go. You can see I've already, uh, actually I don't have 3.5 enabled, but we'll just do that as well. So you want to make sure that these are at least enabled. So once you do that, just hit OK and uh, Windows will do uh, the installation pretty quickly. And then um, you can kind of continue on with the CAPI installation. So while, while that's going in, I do want to stress that, you know, it has to be Windows 10 professional. So if, yep. you, try to, if you try to do this with a home edition of Windows 10, um, that doesn't support IIS. So just be mindful of that when you're selecting a workstation to set it up on. Yep, so we need Windows 10 Pro uh, or any kind of server operating system. Okay. So it looks like it's finished here, so I'll hit close and I can uh, minimize that and continue with the install. So here, if I just hit install, um, it will take care of everything. You can see it's, it's creating application pool and so on, so it should be pretty quick. And now if I launch IIS, um, similar to ACT, under the default website, it will create its own application. Um, so in this case, it's called CAPI. Um, and this can run alongside of ACT, um, any other ACT-related services, so APFW or ACT Web API and so on. Um, okay, and to see if it's working on the right-hand side, if you come over here, um, hit Browse, um, and that should take you over to the, the web page. Okay, first time might be a little bit slow. There we go, so it's working. Um, and now that it's working, um, you want to make sure that you can also access this page from outside the uh, from this machine. Um, so there's a couple of things we'll cover, but we're not going to cover things like port forwarding and things like that. Um, that's something that you know your IT admin or uh, if, if your ACC is willing to do that for you, they can do that. But for for this uh, demo, we'll just cover uh, opening up the port on the Windows firewall. Um, 
So to do that, just open up the start menu again, search for firewall and open the um, Windows firewall for the security. Um, okay, on the left hand side, click on uh, inbound rules. Um, and just you want to add new rule, so click new rule on the right. Um, so you click the port uh, radio button and hit next. Um, so for now, um, I'll just open up port uh, 80, but if you want to set up a SSL certificate, which is highly recommended for security, uh, you also want to open up the port 443 as well. And you can do that by just doing comma and then 443. So this way you can open two ports in one rule. Um, and just hit next. And you want to allow the connection, which should be default. Uh, hit next. And uh, you can leave all these checked next and then give it a, a name, like uh, allow copy or something like that. And hit finish. And that should open up the port. Um, and now you can access this um, uh, from the copy from outside the um, uh, this machine. So if I open up uh, my browser here on my local machine, um, I have uh, the server has a host name s28.acthosting.net slash copy, and you can see we can reach that. Um, and again, the other thing is the host name. So you're not if you're just doing it on like a Windows 10 workstation, chances are you don't have a host name. Um, so again, you will need to look at something like a dynamic DNS service um, that will give you a host name as well. Um, and again, that kind of makes it uh, worthwhile to actually host your database with us instead of this, because instead of you know paying um, you know some IT person to do all this, you can pay much less just and just host the database with us, and we'll kind of take care of all these steps for you. Um, but you do have the option if you go if you want to go that route. Um, so this is going to be your URL. Um, so you want to copy it and paste it into uh, one of the products here. So I have uh, Outlook right now. And uh, as Ken mentioned, we already converted Act for Mail. So I'll click uh, Act for Mail settings. Um, and you can see uh, the Web API URL I've posted here. Uh, we've added two radio buttons at the top. So uh, we now can support CAPI and Act Web API. So you want to make sure you're on CAPI. Uh, enter your URL, everything else you'll leave the same. Um, and if you just hit login, you'll see that it's able to log in and uh, you should be good to go. And I think that's pretty much it for the demo. Are there any questions so far, Ken, Vic? I don't see any questions uh, other than what we've already answered. Okay, so I'll give, give yep. one more moment. Okay, so then uh, do you want to set, let me just make myself the presenter then. Okay, make presenter. Okay, go back to here. Okay, so Austin just showed you how to make the, the change for Act for Mail, and that's what you're going to see um, in what I'm about to demonstrate, as well as what Vic is going to demonstrate, is you know how we've retrofitted some of our applications to support it. So everyone is um, presumably familiar with our Linktivity products. So going to linktivity.net. Okay, obviously I had my information cached. So here's all the different program options, and here is quite plainly the um, API settings. So as you can see, much like an Act for Mail, there's radio buttons uh, options at the top. So you, um, currently it's selected for Act, um, the Act Web API. If I selected this um, and put in the address, then that it would work against that connection. You'd have to click Save, and then you'd have to test the connection. Now, if you currently are using um, any of these API uh, programs, like Link to Calendar, okay, Link to Calendar will adjust automatically um, to the new API or CAPI connections. However, if you have um, link to events, like all of you guys that are in attendance here, signed up using the link to events um, invitation page, okay? Link to forms. And um, Austin, I don't think it affects link to list, does it? Uh, it does affect link to list, yes. Okay, so a link to list. Any of these features, link to events, link to forms, link to list, if you switch over to CAPI, you will have to recreate any of the events or forms or lists. So what I recommend uh, 
especially with events, is wait until you've kind of gone through your uh, monthly scheduled events, switch over to the um, to Cappy, okay, and then re uh, create your new ones using those connections because those configurations won't work anymore because basically those forms are you know. Uh, internet facing uh, links back to your database. Well, those links were previously reliant on the ACT Web, Web API, and those links, once you switched uh, your connection method, will now be dead. Okay. And we can't, you know, change those connections. So they have to be recreated. The one conspicuous exception is linked to calendar, uh, which, you know, will adjust automatically. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. This is easy. Okay, very good. Okay, so the next is, um, if there is no additional questions on that, uh, let's switch it over to Vic. Vic, uh, you're muted right now, but I'm gonna make okay, you the yeah. presenter. Normally I'm in favor of muting Vic, but in this case, you know, I gotta do it for the audience. Well, I won't even say anything, or I could mute you, I guess. That would probably be easier. So yeah. welcome, everybody. Um, so what I'll do today is just show you a quick setup with just a few minutes of the demo. And so we have our HHC API right there. And so this is uh, um, a dev build. You, uh, it's not released yet. Uh, the builds for the Android will be released on Sunday, so it'll be active on Monday. And we're just working out the final details of the release for the iPhone. But the iPhone okay. is just in the final stages of uh, beta testing. There's not a whole lot more to do. Yeah, no, so that'll probably go, go live beginning of next week as well. So first of all, you just uh, type in your um, URL. This is where we all get the witness fix typing speed. Well, and, and uh, my and typing accuracy. Speed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's more like it. Yeah. So you're that's using, the you're using fingers, fingers, right? <laughs> uh, just ignore Ken. Uh, I usually do. It works quite well for me. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. We're almost there. No performance issues. Okay. So here at the bottom screen. So the, here's the big difference um, during the setup. I mean. It's not a big difference. So if you want Cappy on, uh, you have, the, if I click there, I'm not using Cappy. And again, we're just gonna change the wording on that uh, later on today or tomorrow. Um, but if you wanna use a Cappy, uh, you do that. Now, as Ken said, there's a bunch of um, advantages to using the Cappy uh, for HHC1, Act Pro users. Uh, number two, there are some uh, changes in the uh, ability for the calendar display or improvements with CAPI, as well as um, there's some download exception dates for reoccurring activities that work better with CAPI. So we do recommend uh, using it. So HHC username, I'll just type that in. And I log in. So again, the setup is identical. Uh, I have a group here called All Contacts. Again, with the API, those of you that haven't used it, uh, for the API, you do have a choose one group and only one group. And custom fields are not showing up because this is a demo database. And you also download opportunities. You can go through again and choose all the uh, fields that you want to synchronize. Click next, and then we're ready. That's how fast it is. So. Um, typical download. As you saw that download, I mean, I'm only doing 214 contacts here. In my, I didn't want to um, sync to production. I always sync production though. I do about 31,000 contacts with about uh, 400 activities and about 300 opportunities. And those take literally uh, between five and 10 minutes to load. It's that fast. And as you know, there's no um, sync in between. Uh, with the uh, middleware, and so everything is direct to the ACT database. It's instant going through. So I just click next, and then I'm ready to roll uh, going through here. So that's it for the demo. Again, the setup is very simple. Uh, make sure that when you do try it, um, 
that you make sure that you check off the uh, CAPI. Um, and again, to check, if clients say, oh, I'm not sure if I'm using it, you just go to, on the right-hand side on the bottom here, in the menu, uh, you just click on the settings. And then if you go to Act Account Info, yes. you can tell if the CAPI is uh, activated or not. Excellent. Thanks, um, Vic. Just uh, please keep your screen up. I just want to kind of do a, a recap. So mm -hmm. um, obviously based on you know what we, we've built here uh, for the handheld contact, uh, we will be contacting a lot of our hosting customers that are currently using Classic because we've actually provided Classic hosting services um, in the past and uh, hosting providers like RTG, like Keystroke, and like Tech Commandos, um, and John Klubnik mm -hmm. most certainly have been, you know, extremely generous with their time and and their the resources supporting this. Um, but because um, Classic is no longer required <laughs> for all of those hosting customers, uh, Vic, can you make sure that uh, we've got everyone muted here? Yeah, I would double check there quickly. Uh, we do have a question, Ken, too, in case you. Okay. Okay, um, going to get to that, Tamara. So the just one second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be slowly replacing um, and nudging a lot of the people that we're hosting and some of the other hosting providers are hosting, um, and you know provide this CAPI solution so that those users can have access to the API solution. Now, why is that important? Well, if you have a hosted database and we are hosting your handheld contact classic, then no matter what, you are in a long queue of all other users that are being hosted, okay? I'm just gonna ask anyone that's participating to, um, to have themselves muted. Okay, so what CAPI does is it provides you a direct connection to your data. So you're not in queue with anyone. You don't have to wait for anyone else to complete a sync so you can get much more uh, updates of a lot more data more frequently. Okay, so this is a much better hosted solution and it's a lot easier on the resources. So this is where we're gonna be um, heading. Now, there's a couple of things that I really wanna um, kind of summarize and explain, you know, why we're doing this. So, you know, the, the big advantage of CAPI is support for the 64-bit uh, application pools, okay? So you're not gonna have the two gig uh, memory limit of the 32-bit application pools that we frequently run into, okay? So it can handle much larger uh, queries. The other thing is it's, it supports much faster filtering, which is performed at the SQL so, uh, server level. Uh, parameters are saved in headers, and I apologize, some of this stuff is a little technical, are saved in headers instead of query strings. This means that you can have a large amount of parameters um, and not run into the IIS limits, which require editing of the web config file, okay? Uh, they, there are, or uh, there are easier ways to manage and maintain each parameters is kept in its separate um, header instead of one long URL. Okay, that was a bit technical. Um, the other thing is, and this is really relevant to us as, uh, for handheld contact, is CAPI has certain endpoints that are not available in the Act Web API. And this has been a real struggle for us, uh, such as getting activity cleared information or deleted dates. Uh, frequently when we're um, pulling down information and someone clears an activity or deletes an activity uh, in Act, a uh, handheld contact can't reconcile that. So what we had to do is build these workarounds where every 24 hours, all activities are downloaded. Um, CAPI um, works around that and has much better uh, detections for those endpoints. Uh, performance is also much better than the Act Web API in general due to CAPI not returning data that is not needed with each query such as not returning data if a property value is not the default value for that type. This cuts down on latency and bandwidth uh, depending on the size of the synchronization of data. And I'll give you an example. We had one customer that used to store huge image files uh, on their database in uh, picture fields. Okay, and she basically could not get AMA to work because there was no field filtering to uh, work around those or exclude those fields. So what would happen is AMA would constantly crash and not be able to retrieve group data because those um, image files were so big, and you know AMA would or the um, uh, the API would just crash trying to account for those massive um, files. Okay, so we've got the ability with CAPI to filter out what we don't need. 
Um, and to that point, uh, performance improvement because you could select which fields you want to get the value on. Um, and as I said at the beginning, uh, one of the biggest advantages is CAPI provides support for um, pro and off-plan premium customers with version 19.2 or higher. So really, for all of the, the API functionalities and for developers out there and resellers out there that really want to offer things like link to calendar to all of their customers on active subscriptions or not, Cappy really provides that bridge to, you know, a huge legacy audience. So we're hoping that that, um, you know, that really extends what we can do and offer uh, to all of our ACT customers, past and present. Okay. Um, and why is it free? The, the reason it's free is because we want this to be the standard. We want people to develop against it. We, we don't want to keep layering on costs. We're not increasing the cost of any of our add-ons that have multiple connection supports. So, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, people have access to this technology um, so that they can provide these services. Now, think about all the ACCs on the call. Think about the amount of uh, additional consulting that they can provide, setting up their customers uh, with CAPI for those that don't want to be in a hosted environment. This presents all kinds of different, um, you know, consulting opportunities and providing your, you know, really offering yourself as a gateway to all the different other API services that suddenly they're accessible to. And if you're on the development side, you can start building against plugins um, so you can integrate, like we, I showed you with CAM, integrate um, services um, into the customer's website that exchange data directly with their ACT database. All of these things lead to more stickiness, lead to people, you know, getting more out of their ACT data. And we don't have to sit back and, you know, listen to other people say, well, this can't be done with ACT, that can't be done with ACT. Well, guess what? With CAPI, free, it can be done with ACT, okay? And we can hold our head a little bit higher and offer uh, deeper, uh, more meaningful uh, services to all of our customers. Now let's quickly go through the. Uh, oh, Ken, there's one question here that came just to me. Uh, will HHC KPI work uh, without internet access? Um, you need internet access because the uh, CAPI, um, well, things like, actually, let me clarify. So things like handheld contact is um, an on premise solution. So in that case, you know, you've got the data on your device, but you still need CAPI. Okay, or an internet connection to connect to your database that is um, connected to CAPI. So, you know, th th there, this isn't magic there, you know, you still need connectivity of some type. This provides, uh, you know, the, 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 the connectivity uh, connected, sorry, let me rephrase that, that's badly put. Um, CAPI will provide the connection to the database. It won't provide the internet to the database. Correct, but uh, so the question I think um, was asking is, if I don't have access, can I still have access to all my information? And the and the answer is yes. Yeah, if there's data exchanged, absolutely. A lot of the solutions that we've built, um, for instance, like I showed you the Keystroke Account Manager, that information um, gets cached and that's available instantly. And just like with the um, with handheld contact, that gets downloaded. It's on your device. So you know. It, it's kind of a qualified yes, because it really is going to depend on the application that you're using and how the developer has set it up. So a lot of our tools will download the data like handheld contact. Um, but if you're you're looking for obviously a connection for updated information, internet would of course be required. Excellent. Okay. okay. Should I read the questions here? Uh, I see Karen has asked if there's written uh, documentation for the process. Yes, Karen will be distributing that next week to all ACCs, uh, providing a link to it. We're probably gonna add it to the same folder that the download is in, so people have like kind of one place to go. And we'll provide del uh, developer documentation as well, okay? And we're gonna be hosting uh, webinars so that people, um, you know, can get more comfortable with it more quickly and also, you know, access uh, Austin as a resource because, you know, truthfully guys, before we brought this, to you, we went through the painful process of retrofitting all of our own applications. Think about it. Handheld contact touches just about every single table in the dead in the database. So just about every single endpoint. So we knew by the time we were done retrofitting it, um, we had to put kind of put ourselves as the canary in the cave and say, if we can hit every single endpoint and make this work, then we know that we can answer um, 
most developers questions and that's what we did and and i'm not going to pretend that it was you know an instant process it was a, a great learning experience for us and took a little bit longer but we actually feel a lot more confident bringing this to the market um after what we learned okay so what kind of performance increase do you expect um well i mean the the performance increase obviously the 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 speed performance will always be throttled by your your connection link okay but what we've seen is you know if you're running against a 32 bit api versus a 64 bit api and you're you're chunking a lot more information then that's going to pass through much much more efficiently because the system can use whatever memory it requires okay as opposed to being limited to a two gig limit okay if there's a small amount of data being transmitted you're probably not going to see a whole lot of difference because there isn't any thresholds that you're hitting um can can i can i elaborate on that question a bit because i if you remember before your webinar a couple of weeks ago i did do a little benchmark um so so i basically ran a query on the entire database which was it was about I don't know 250,000 contra uh, contacts uh, and one or two fields I believe. Um, so and this is testing with the 64-bit API by the way of ACT. Oh good. So oh, good. It, it shouldn't have any. So it's pretty much identical, both 64-bit and both pretty much the same query. Um, Cappy returned everything in I think three-ish minutes, um, and the ACT API I think crashed after 20 minutes and returned nothing. So. So yeah, the, so, then the difference becomes a bit binary, right? It one works, one doesn't. One doesn't. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, Austin. I remember you actually showed me a few of those benchmarks. Those were excellent examples. Um, but you know, to someone's point, if you're dealing with a small amount of data, you might not see um, you know a measurable difference. But the more data that you're bringing through, then yeah, um, that one case I actually was watching those um, uh, those uh, benchmarks, and it was pretty incredible to see the difference. You know, where one was in three minutes and the other one just crashed after 20. Okay, so let's see here. Just uh, to Steve, go. Sorry, Steve has a question. This will not work for the... The poor uh, devils hosted by ACT. Um, <laughs> so, you know, condolences are obviously implied. Um, it will not work because they will not um, support any API other than their own. So that, you know, that's what I kind of said at the outset, and that's why it's not going to be available as a SaaS. Now, in a perfect world, um, which I don't believe any of us think we're living, but in a perfect world, SwiftPage will at one point realize that they haven't really developed an optimal API for add-ons, and they will consider incorporating this in to their environment, um, but I'm not holding my breath, but it, it's possible, anything's possible. Okay, um, let's see. So Tom Perkinson asks if we will be sunsetting HH, HHC Classic. Absolutely not. And the reason is that there's a lot of pro users that even don't have CAPI accessible to them. If you imagine that there's a, a ton of pro users out there, one or two users that are on home-based operating systems or have a slower, unreliable uh, um, internet system. Like we, we take pride in the the ease of setup with Classic and how it kind of circumvents all of the you know the port forwarding and things like that. And we we will continue to offer that as a solution. But one thing, um, and and certainly Tom working for RTG should appreciate is that we are not going to be imposing um, Classic as a, an overhead expectation on um, on hosting providers because now there is a much better solution that they're capable of setting up and supporting more easily and it really it, it requires no intervention beyond the initial setup of the, the hosting provider so everything will be in the hands of the customers which is what I think everyone wants okay so Brian Pearson has asked just to be clear on internal intranet use this client is on a secure uh, VPN and their Apple devices are behind firewalls and act for webs never goes out to the DMC um, I'm going to ask you, Brian, because you're kind of freaking me out here with all these kinds of different, um, you know, specific cases. You'll probably need to email Awesome, um, and he'll provide you, um, you know, at least a more accurate. Because after about the third qualification, I kind of lost track. Okay, uh, Dwayne um, Dwayne Morrison asked me if Dwayne Morrison Smith asked me if SwiftPage has endorsed this. Um, 
you know what, we're not keeping anything from anyone. We're publishing it on our website and I, I wanna be really clear, but I'm also not going to conceal my contempt for you know, what we've had to go through working on developing against the API. Last week, you know, um, the API was broken yet again. And uh, we were getting reports from customers that had to, that couldn't download more than 200 contacts at a time. You know, we can blame the API all we, all we like, but ultimately this comes back and costs us business. And so we had to take the quality control into our own hands and that's what we've done. So Dwayne, I'm not sure, but I don't care. Okay. Um, now, uh, Brian then asks, uh, will this work for uh, HHC Mac? And the answer is yes. Okay, so the first iteration will be strictly API, and then the second iteration will uh, support CAPI. Okay, just that we've got some backlog items to kind of make sure that we can release HHC Mac next week. Um, but then uh, right after that, the next uh, backlog item will be supporting CAPI. And, and I'll be honest with you, we've already done all the heavy lifting, so our developer knows uh, what to do for this version. Okay, um, Austin, I'm gonna let you answer this one. Is CAPI uh, base 64 encoded for the credentials? Um, no, it's not, uh, because it's not really needed. It's not passing the credentials. Um in you know uh, in in the URL or anything like that so that's kind of what if if you know if you're um, worried about security then that's why I mentioned make sure you host with SSL um, because in that case everything's encrypted but um, yeah base 64 is not really secure anyway you can easily reverse it so I didn't really see the need to base 64 encode the credentials okay thank you Austin any other questions that's all I okay. see um, uh, Tamara uh, has asked, how do I find my CAPI URL on my Windows 10? Okay, so, the, you know, the uh, Tamara, obviously, there it's going to be specific to you. If you don't have a static IP address, okay, or a DIN DNS, um, um, you know, kind of pointing to the outside of your router, um, then it, you're going to need that because obviously, you know, everyone who has an internet address, it's a, it's a dynamic um, IP address and you can't reliably host against a dynamic uh, IP address. But a DIN DNS or a static IP address uh, would uh, support that. And then likely there would be forward slash, whatever that address is, forward slash um, CAPI. Now then you can, uh, obviously, with DNS changes, um, resolve that to a friendly host name, okay? But, um, you know, that that's kind of getting beyond the scope of this. There is one more question there, Ken. Okay. Um, okay. There will not be a way that users of CAPI can be locked, blocked by SwiftPage. No. Uh, because remember, we're not using CAPI to do things like AMA. We're not using CAPI to, to you know, run insights. We're not using CAPI to do any internal um, act functions. What we're using it for is to connect to the data, okay? And you know, if you're connecting to the data um, for add-on purposes, it's not in their interest to block that. I mean, let's be honest, guys. This isn't, I mean, we can all joke tongue in cheek and, and you know, say whether or not they will or won't like this. This keeps act customers around. Okay, maybe um, SwiftPage seeds some of their API exclusivity, but that's what happens in a, in a competitive environment. Okay, and quite frankly, if their API uh, was more stable and was 64-bit from the outset, this wouldn't be required. But, you know, we ran into a lot of struggles. Like when we first launched Link to Calendar, previously known as Book to Act, it was broken almost every single month by API updates. You can't run a, a development business having those kinds of injurious dependencies on a third-party publisher. So, you know, we had to really take the quality control into our hands. Um, Austin, who is our CTO, did a fantastic job. Our other developers like uh, Katerina and uh, Bavin and even Dwayne uh, all have learned to kind of build against CAPI. And I can tell you all of their experiences have been uh, far more positive. So we feel comfortable with the direction we're going with this. And I think that is... Yeah, that's it for the questions. Okay, so I want to thank everyone. I know that this, you know, if you're an end user, this probably got a little bit deep in the weeds, more than you were expecting, but this was mostly uh, distributed out to the ACCs. I hope that everyone sees this as a really valuable opportunity to kind of extend your services and extend 
um, what you can um, now offer ACT customers. And, and hopefully we can use these kinds of things um, to you know, really keep our customers around and add value uh, to the, the ACT ecosystem. Okay, so with that, I'll let everyone get back to the day. Thank you very much for your time. It was a great turnout. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email uh, Vic or myself and we'll get back to you directly. Thank you again and have a great day.